I'm Ryan Osbach with Copeland Canada. We're here today to talk about filter compressors. Today I'm in the Integrated Learning Centre for Copeland Canada here in Brantford, Ontario. I have with me the VSS 601 training compressor that we use in our training programs and we take around with us from location to location. Today, we're going to go over mechanical seal change on the VSS compressors. A compressor shaft seal kit will come with your station or your rotating assembly, a stationary assembly or seat, as well as a lip seal and the seal cover o ring. Now, thing to keep in mind this is our training compressor. It does come apart a lot easier than what a field compressor might come apart. First step, of course, is going to be to remove the seal cover. Eight bolts around the outside. I'm just going to pull them all out. Now, of course, when you do a seal change, like any other service, you do need to make sure that you did go through all your safety procedures, your safe work procedures, the machine is locked out, isolated, depressurized, and ready and safe for work. Seal cover is loosened off. Uh, you got all the bolts out. Now it's time to pull the seal cover. You'll want to spade to spade pay special attention and add uh, a drip tray or a catch tray for oil because there will be oil behind this cover. There are two jacking screw bolts points where you can put in threaded rods or two bolts to lift it off the face. I like using them on this trainer just to help me have a grip to pull it away. So you'll pull it away nice and easy Try to make it even so you don't crush anything. Try not to drop anything. And again, you have a gap where you're going to lose a bunch of oil. So you want to make sure that you have that covered. So then you'll pull your seal off. And of course, what you're going to do first is you're going to do a short, a quick examination of the interface. Try to determine why you failed your seal in the first place or why the seal failed. Not necessarily that it's your fault. So you're going to look for any chipping, cracking, heavy carbon deposits or other deposits that could be inside, Color discoloration, all those things that can kind of, discoloration is a sign of heat. Once you have your outer, your seat off, you're going to grab, reach inside and grab your inner stationary seat or rotating seat, sorry, and you're going to pull it off and you're going to have and look around the face as well. You'll, sometimes you'll get a hues of color. And that's an indication of high heat. Other times you'll get rings or scratches across the surfaces from high debris the con contents, buildups of different materials that have gone through it and scratched off the surface. Now again, this is a training compressor and it comes apart all the time. So you have to kind of ignore for this purpose the different seats, different apps different things on the seats. When you're changing a seal, although I'm doing it on this machine, again, a trainer, you do want to make sure that you keep your fingers off of the seats, uh, faces of the seals. So with all the seals disassembled, now's the time to take a, you can go through and take a good look and check inside your machine as well. Make sure everything is nice and clean. You're going to look for your anti-rotation pin. Make sure it's in place. Make sure it's not damaged, twisted. Make sure there's no scoring, scratching, or damages to the shaft itself. Nothing that can impede the O-ring seal. And then go for it. And then if everything is okay, you would simply you'd continue your disassembly. Disassembly, we will pull out the inner race and it will just pull out. You might need to get a little bit of a 
come in from the back side, you might have to knock it out. One thing that's very important to remember is that there is a ridge inside that's part of the housing. And you gotta make sure that you get the seal and not the ridge in the housing. You remove the seal, remove the inner seal, that'll come out. Then you would remove the lip seal, that also has to get punched out. Replace the O-rings and remove the O-rings, clean everything, replace everything, put new O-rings in, lubricate with clean, fresh refrigerant oil or the same oil that is in your compressor. Lubricate the seals, seal faces, and then begin your reassembly process. Reassembly is much the same as disassembly, just all the steps in reverse. So you're going to make sure you have a new O-ring inside. You do have your anti-rotation pins that will line up, so you have to make sure you get that right so that it sits all the way in. You're just going to push in and then make sure that when you turn it, that it is actually locked in place. You can hear a bit of a clicking and you don't get because it will twist with it and it just doesn't go the whole distance. Again, at this point, that's when I like to lubricate the seal face. I'll take an oil can, apply a good liberal coating to that seal face, make sure it's wet. On the seal cover, you'll have pressed in your new seal, your new inner race, or sorry, your stationary assembly. And then you'll need a new O-ring on the outer side. There are two grooves. One groove, this outs to the inside one, or the inboard one, is actually a lubrication groove. It's meant to channel oil. The outer one is the one that is the correct one for the over. When you go to reinstall it, you also need to keep in mind that the drip tube point does go on the bottom. So there is a top, 
and there is a bottom. You want to carefully reinstall that seal face so that you don't make contact with the seal on the shaft. So you don't damage that inner seat. From here, you can reinstall your bolts. We tend to start with just the two. And then make sure you evenly bring it back into, into face. You don't want to slam it in because you can damage the carbon seats. You just want to take it in nice and even. It is spring tension on that stationary assembly to help provide a constant seat and a good seal. Nice to just slowly take it in. Once everything is in place, one spot that I find is a bit of a critical test. We're snug there on those two bolts. We are made full contact. At this point, I like to make sure the shaft does rotate. Something is caught, pulled in, and that could be too much force, more force than what's required. So I make sure your shaft rotates. So from here, we finish out installing all the bolts. Once all the bolts are in, you're going to want to go around and torque all the bolts. Seal cover on the VSS 601, it is 20 foot pounds, is your torque. Go around. Just a standard torquing procedure. Just make sure everything is nice and even. So you have a complete and secured seal cover. With that finished, the seal change is done. This is where I find the best time uh, before you put the coupling back on, definitely want to do a leak check of this. You can apply air or dry nitrogen. Dry nitrogen is the best alternative. That way you have a nice safe gas in case it's leaking and it's dry, it contains no moisture. And then you can remove the dry nitrogen, evacuate the compressor, and return it to service with normal refrigerant, provided you don't have any further leaks or any leaking at the seal. Of course, you're going to want to put your drip tube back in reassemble the coupling. Make sure the guard is on before you take any of your locks off and your lockout tagout procedures. And then you can return the compressor back to service where you'll have good long running life. Now one other thing to comment on it is why did the seal fail? Seals tend to fail because of contamination, improper operation, and poor maintenance. With that, it's important that we operate our compressors in the right design range that they're set for and made for, and that we also take care of our machines. If we're doing proper oil changes. We're paying attention to our filter life and filter differentials and changing them accordingly. Uh, again, filters, oil filters, are only good for one year after being put into service. So once they're in contact with refrigerant and oil, one year starts, and then that oil filter needs to be changed out every year. So you want to make sure that you're taking care of your machines. You also want to make sure that you're operating them nicely. And the other thing to check is going to be on your annual inspections, where you're going to check for bearing tolerances. You want to make sure that this compressor, is I the main bearing, isn't what's taking it out because maybe your thrust bearings are worn down and your compressor is nearing the end of its lifespan. Then you also want to go to do an end plate check and inspection on your compressor as well. Things to keep in mind and things to work on. I'm Osbeck for Copeland Canada. And that's been a seal change on the VSS 601.